We open on a girl that is clearly not okay. Are you okay? Yeah. And does need some help. You need some help? No. She rips it down the road in her Nissan Versa and heads to the beach. Something is after her, and whatever it is, it's not a licensed chiropractor. Our protagonist Jamie Height, or Jay for short, goes for a swim in her backyard pool. It's autumn and the leaves are already falling off the trees, but Jay still thinks it's warm enough to swim because she doesn't play by nature's rules. Jay is drinking her favorite brand of cola. Her sister Kelly and her two friends Paul and Yara are chilling in the living room. To better define the movie's setting, we see a group of teens watching a horror movie from the 50s on a TV from the 90s, in a living room with wallpaper from the 80s, and an e-reader from the future. Jay goes on a date with her new boyfriend, Hugh, who looks like a knockoff Lee Stryber, the actor that played Sabretooth in X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Sabretooth sniffs trouble and asks to leave because he sees his imaginary friend approaching. On their next day, Hugh romantically drives Jay to a dark, abandoned parking lot in the middle of nowhere to get frisky in the back of his car. To nobody's surprise, Hugh chloroforms Jay. He ties her to a wheelchair to show off his new real estate investment. As a sneak peek to his master class, Hugh then gives Jay a private lesson about the STI he transmitted to her. He explains she will constantly be followed by a murderous, shape-shifting being that only she and the past transmitters can see. The being can only travel at a walking pace and must be passed on by sleeping with someone. Hugh drops Jay off at home before fleeing. The police have no luck finding him because he was going under a fake name. The ultimate deception. At school the next day, she gazes out the window and sees the being as it approaches. She rudely walks through a conversation during her escape and drives away to get help from Kelly, Paul, and Yara. They're skeptical, but they agree to stay the night with her. Jay hears a window break and Paul investigates, giving the least reassuring incident report ever. I mean, whoever broke it must have run away. Jay takes a look for herself and sees it. She gets upset that it's peeing all over her mother's laminate floors and runs up the stairs, like a rookie, to lock herself in her room. Paul, Kelly, and Yara come up to support her, but it, now a seven-foot Lithuanian basketball player, is hot on her trails. She runs out of the house and bikes to the park, followed by her sisters and friends as well as their neighbor Greg. Let's call this crew the STI team. The STI team search the property of where Hugh lived and identify his real name as Jeff Redmond from the high school he went to, a quality of sleuthing that I guess was far above the police's pay grade. They go to meet with Jeff and have a little picnic as they discuss it. If it kills her, it gets me. It goes straight down the line whoever started it. The STI team drive up to Greg's family cottage to temporarily escape danger. Jay practices shooting and they hang out on the beach. Unfortunately, as the movie title suggests, it followed. It starts yanking at Jay's hair. Paul whacks it with a chair and then takes one for the team. Jay starts popping caps and then drives off with Greg's car. She Vin Diesels it around a corner, but Paul walkers it into a cornfield. She wakes up in a hospital recovering from her gruesome injury. The gentleman he is, Greg gives Jay some sexual healing because she was hot just like an oven and needed some loving. Paul is jealous because he too wanted to Marvin Gaye and get it on. Three days later, peering outside, Jay sees it break Greg's front window and climb into his home. She runs over to warn him, but she's too late. Another one bites the dust, which means it's back after Jay. Paul sees this tragedy as an excellent time to offer his penis to the cause. She refuses. The STI team, now down a man, break into a pool at a local community center. They set up numerous plugged in electrical appliances around the pool in hopes of electrocuting it. It arrives and, in an unexplained character development, starts throwing the appliances at Jay in the pool. Paul attempts to shoot it, but idiotically hits Yara instead. Kelly covers it with a sheet and Paul shoots it in the head. It falls into the pool and Jay races to get out. It grabs her leg and drags her under, but Paul, now bleeding confidence, finds Skull again. The pool fills with blood and Paul and Jay celebrate like rabbits. 
in a happy ending. Paul and Jay, now together, can share their love and their stalker. If you like nudist roofers, white guys named Greg, or just think kids crawling through doggy doors is cute, then this movie's for you. Drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more horror recaps. Comment down below what movies you want to see butchered next. 